Okay, and we're now with the uh, Justice Integration Services, JIS, and if you could introduce yourselves and then make whatever presentation, whatever order you'd like. Mr. Mayor, I'm Judge Mike Mondelli. I've been chairman of the JIS Policy Committee for several years now, and I brought with me our director, uh, Natalie Steers. She's been the director as long as I've been uh, chairman of the JIS Policy Committee, and it's been five or six or seven years that we've been appearing before the Budget Committee this this hearings in, in um, preparation for a new fiscal year. This year, um, I think, is is different than in other years because we have uh, we have managed to serve our customers. As, as I look on your your schedule here, I see we are on the bottom of the list. We're the last one, which I think for JIS is appropriate because we are the base for all those other justice agencies, the district attorney, the criminal court clerk, the juvenile court clerk, the clerk, the clerk and master, state trial courts. We are the information technology professionals for all those agencies, so we need to be on the bottom as a foundation for them. But in that position that we find ourselves in, these customers make demands on us, and the demands are such that we need to be kept abreast of the latest technological developments. And we're going to ask this afternoon for your consideration as we try to attain those goals, and specifically, and I'll let Ms. Steers talk to you about that, but specifically we are looking to move towards a new operating system, a new form of providing services to our customers. And uh, this is a, a program, Microsoft.net, that will have far-reaching effects. It will benefit all of our customers, and um, one that I think is, is critical. That's why this year is special. I think it's critical to JIS that we get the funds necessary to make this jump from our current technology position to the next step above. And with that, I'll let Ms. Steers answer any questions. Or Thank you, Judge. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Hynote, Mr. Riebling, thank you for having us here today. I'd like to start off by uh, thanking the staff of JIS, a very dedicated uh, group of people, uh, for another productive and successful year. We've been able to deliver uh, more functionality this year that um, to the JIS community, which has enabled them to speed up processes and to uh, save on resources. Some of those you have highlighted here. Um, we've only uh, put down four accomplishments, but um, the criminal court clerk's office, for instance, they have uh, stacks of criminal abstracts that they uh, needed to print and send to the state. We've uh, managed to, to be able to send all of those electronically. And then we've automated the uh, probation violations and the adult probation application for General Sessions Court. So when someone is um, has violated probation, they used to uh, write up a Word document. And as you know, that needed all the demographic information, warrant numbers, OCA numbers. And, and naturally, with a manual uh, system like that, it would be error prone. And we have automated that as well so that um, you know, with an event, all of that information comes over manually. There's a free form field to enter the reason for the violation and um, print it out and send it to the judge. This has taken this process down from about 15 minutes per to less than five minutes per and has saved them, uh, I think, over 139 hours so far. And we just implemented it at the end of the year. Um, we are also at about 90% uh, on the way of completing the Windows uh, 7 migration, so we're almost complete. And um, I know that we have been asked to submit a 3% cut this year, and for JIS, that amounts to $62,100, and this would mean the elimination of a JIS position. Uh, as Judge Mondelli talked about, um, this is a year that we find ourselves in need of asking for some improvements. Um, as you know, JIS supports, maintains, and does all the enhancements for the CJA suite of applications, the, case, uh, the court case management systems. And uh, we are now facing both some short-term needs and some long-term needs. For the short term, we are being asked to deliver functionality to our customer base, which is which we cannot do in the current technology. 
Also, it is becoming increasingly necessary to be able to provide Metro employees who work out in the field a secure way to do their job without having to write everything down and leaving it in their car, sometimes sensitive information. These are for people like outposted POs, uh, attorneys, uh, uh, investigators. And um, our, our long-term need is, you know, these systems are, are aging now. The technology is aging. And uh, we are finding it increasingly difficult and will be faced with that more so in the coming years to find developers who are either able to or willing to work in that, uh, on that technology. It's called Power Builder. So as Judge Mondelli said, we, um, we have decided that we need to move to the .NET technology and begin with all of our, our requests that are on the table uh, for, such as uh, online payments, for instance, is one of the requests, to do those in, uh, in .NET and to eventually move then to .NET. What we're asking for in order to accomplish this is um, in the operating budget for a little less than $200,000 to hire two full-time developers to assist with, with those immediate project needs and the eventual uh, migration. We're asking for $160,000 in the operating capital for a for contractor funding to be able to come in, look at our architecture, uh, help us with the setting up our environment, and also on one-time things, which are like identity management, core pieces to the applications, which can be reused to make sure that we've got the right pick and that they can be reused uh, throughout all the applications. And then we're asking for $50,000 to train our current uh, uh, power builder uh, developers on the new .NET, in the new .NET environment. And, um, just uh, so you know, we have already begun this process. Some years ago, we we did we had OGs. You remember the OGs project that we had, which was Java. Um, we we all sat down and decided that that was not, um, you know, we, we couldn't move forward with that project at that time, but that we would come back later with uh, a different way to do this, and uh, and this is it. Uh, we knew then that we needed to change technologies, and what we have done is we've taken some of the applications that were built in that, in that Java uh, project over that time, and we have already rewritten those to, or we have rewritten three of them in .NET, and we wanted to do that as proof of concept to make sure that we could do this with the, with the individuals that we have in-house today and make sure that we have applications that we can support. And with that, I would... No, no, no. the most important part, the $64. <laughs> Didn't we? Yeah, as, as Judge Mondelli is... is um, as said, the OG's project was $6.9 million, and uh, we came back and said that we would discontinue the project at that time and gave back, or the, the funding that had not been appropriated, we said that we would, we would no longer need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, nobody's told you that today, have they? No. I gave, I gave <laughs> money back, <laughs> six more, nine million. Not a lot of give backs. Not a lot of, we didn't spend the money. For the <laughs> um, this is a, were you here for the criminal court clerks? I was. And I'm not having served in your position at one point, and um, I, I just want to understand where this is heading. Um, one of the requests from the clerk, which was made very well, was that they needed two um, coders and a, project. and a project manager. And the project manager position largely being to supervise the coders. And that the project manager position is akin to a function that JIS has performed. And that the person may be physically located with y'all. Is that right? I said that. Yeah. So, Where should that be? And I thought you were going to ask why do they need to and why do we need to and where are they going to be? 
Well, oh, yeah, but we were getting, we were getting <laughs> that was coming back. Yeah. I, I'm, Natalie can tell you the technology. I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a philosophical position in that when JIS was started over 20 years ago, we went all over the country to find this sort of system. And when you went around the country, what you found was the criminal court clerk had his IT office, he had his database, the juvenile court clerk had his, the DA had his, probation had theirs. So we brought it all together under one umbrella, JIS. Right. And we believe that, that the two coders that we're asking for will be primarily operating under JIS with the direct benefit trickling down to all of our customers. The coders that Mr. Gentry is asking for that would work under our direct supervision would work within the community, but as I understand his proposal, and, and Natalie might want to correct me on this, they would be more focused on the immediate needs of the criminal court clerk, whatever they might be. But the benefits that come from all of the coders would trickle down to all of the customers. Right. I understand the coder part of it. It's the project manager part of it. That, that why would that, if the person's actually physically located with y'all and is performing the function that is, I mean, part of the rationale for JIS is that you, you hire this expertise in one area and then use it throughout the, the, the justice system. Right. So why wouldn't it be... In JIS. Yeah, we have had some discussions about the uh, the clerk's office requesting coders. Um, we really have not, and and we've talked about those coders located at JIS and such. But we've we've not had at length discussions about what they would be doing exactly, and we really have not had any discussions surrounding the project manager specifically. So I'm, I'm afraid I won't, wouldn't be able to answer that question very well. Okay, there's something I'm just curious about. The Microsoft.net, what's the rollout period for something like that? We have, um, we have been doing this now for, I want to say nine months, and this is with brand new, uh, you know, people that have never worked on this before, and we have rolled out three, um, be it not huge applications, they, they aren't huge, but um, for instance, the last one that we are, we are just about to roll out now is the Criminal Court Clerk's website, which is not just a website, but has all of those uh, uh, hooks into to, uh, to CGIS and does all the criminal history and, and all of that, so it functions yeah, like So that was really my next question, which was the Microsoft.net is a platform that all your customers can build their needs into, I guess, right? Do I have that right? Um, yes, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I believe so. So, so like these customers that Judge Mondelli just read down the list that we've met right. with this afternoon, those are all your customers. Right. And so Microsoft.net is a platform where, where it gives you the capacity to build their IT needs into that platform administered by JIS, right? Correct. Did Correct. I say that right? Yes. I've now totally exhausted my knowledge of IT. <laughs> I can't, I, go any I, can't, thanks, Joe. I can't go any further. I can't go any further. Rich, are there additional costs besides the for them to roll out the .NET besides the the staffing requirements? Or is there some? Are you asking for? Are you going to be asking? Did you ask for some capital costs associated with that or anything? Or, uh, uh, at this point. Um, we believe that we have in the infrastructure that we have set up as far as uh, hardware, we believe we have everything we need. We, um, we have been looking at tools. We are not quite sure yet, um, you know, if there are any, any big tools that we're going to need, but I think we've seen one that we might look at in the $10,000 range, and we think we can handle that. So we, the answer to your question is nothing, is not, not, nothing at this point. Great. Well, thank you. It's very well done. Good seeing you both, and I appreciate you. all you're doing. Thank you for your time. Keep up the good work. And if you're bored tomorrow morning, come at 9. We'll start again. 